I think we have all we need to formulate an interesting theory. Those five steps we talked about at the end last time. You've done your part. Must be from the small boiler room to the midway point between the two boiler areas with no boiler in it. I needed this place to listen to the words people have to say. That's something they could never understand. You've done your part. You told us plenty. At 101, we can barely make out one of the boilers. Of stories. Unlike earlier in the tape. I needed this place to listen to the words. And for most of it, Skullface's voice has a slight reverb on it, indicative of a smaller space. You've done your part. There is also the symbolism of the Battle of Midway in World War II, which for the Japanese was the beginning of the end. Just as what happens here on Camp Omega is the beginning of the end for Zero and for Big Boss. First Big Boss, then Zero. Liberation is at hand. And that means that his entire monologue isn't only for the suffering soon to die POW or the listener of the tape, it's also for the audience he was already speaking to before we arrived. After all, regardless of the room specifics, Skullface's speech smoothly transitions from the us of them, XOF, to the them of us, meaning the us that is the listener playing and the sufferer suffering on the gurney. I needed this place to listen to the words people have to say. That's something they could never understand. You've done your part. You told us plenty. Skullface says that he needed this place to listen to the words people had to say. That's something they could never understand. And then that you, as in the POW, you've done your part. You've told us plenty. That would imply that he has an audience who are standing there deathly silent, which of course is what XOF always does. I tell you, I'm glad they're out of here. It was like living in a graveyard and rubbing shoulders with dead men. Yeah, their boss, his crew, like phantoms. Every last one. So back to Chico's tape, number one. The next thing that happens is Chico says, those lights are so bright. He's dark, but there are soldiers everywhere. Lots of choppers coming and going. Those lights are so bright. He's paraphrasing, of course, the Mother Base Massacre mission's title, Shining Lights Even in Death. The beginning is in the end, the Alpha and the Omega, which is a reference to the Bible about how Jesus is the beginning and the end. Then we hear a chopper fly overhead. Those lights are so bright. Before Chico says, time to get moving. Now, we may think at first that the lights he mentions are those on the base, but the way he starts his infiltration after the chopper seems to leave may mean it's actually the heli with the light. But either way, this scenario conjures to mind the exact opening of MGS-1. Snake got tricked into thinking that the big bad boss, in his case Liquid, was departing on a chopper, making it then safe for Snake to enter the compound. But that, like this, and like the beginning of Ground Zero's will be, turns out to be a lie. Now we're 42 seconds in. Chico's labored breathing implies he's moving and keeping low. Like the very first fragment that we heard, the recording starts before he gets to set his gear or himself down. And then he says that he got close to the fence to see if he could spot her. I 
that close to the fence to see if I could spot her. For a sec, we can hear this is a different location than the last entry. It sounds more wide open, maybe more closer to the sea. His feet seem to tread on sand. And the crickets are further away. It's likely he's somewhere near the cave, far off the beaten path. The haven that Snake will be told to bring both Chico and Paws to prior to Exfil. I don't think we're actually in the cave necessarily, however, it isn't echoey enough. So Chico says he approached a fence to see if he could see Paws. I got close to the fence to see if I could spot her. They had a guard posted so I got out of there. And then he says he saw a guard, a sentry, so he left. Now, if there had already been those dog-like cages in the old prison, wouldn't Chico have been able to tell if she was there? I don't think he means the old prison, but rather the refugee camp the refugee camp, you'll remember, consists of those tents that are directly adjacent from the beachy, sandy area that he sounds like he's in. Now, you should notice Chico's distinction between soldier and guard. He's stark, but there are soldiers everywhere. They had a guard posted, so I got out of there. One works on the base, but the other keeps out intruders and keeps in prisoners. The guard Chico sees conveys to him that he's on the right track because only the place where prisoners are would require a guard within the base. He thinks in short that this is his time and place to risk contact with the enemy. Guess security's not so light after all. I'm coming, Paz. He says, I'm coming, Paz. Was all this recorded for her? Who can say? Next, at 106, we hear more wind. I'm okay. I'm okay. Chico says, I'm okay, I'm okay, like a mantra. He had a close call with the sentry, I presume. He'll actually repeat this in the helicopter. The inspection was nothing but a smoke screen. It's okay. I heard explosions. It's okay. They played us like a damn fiddle! Oh, Give it back! This isn't right, that was ours! The beginning is in the end. It's ours! I'm okay. Give it back! How do you feel now? How do you feel? At 118, Chico's running for his life. I think I found her! It's gotta be past! He thinks he maybe saw her, but clearly not without getting maybe seen himself. No, no, no. 131. They're looking for me. He says they're looking for me. That means more than one guard. Chico was kidding himself thinking this would be easy. 132. Here's where it gets kind of interesting. <laughs> We hear dogs that Skullface will all but certainly take away to allow for snakes infiltration in Ground Zeroes. The 
dogs we actually see at the beginning of Ground Zeroes, but never see in-game, which is a huge clue. We hear Chico running on gravel like the roads on the base. <laughs> One thirty nine, we hear it seems Chico's made it to some hiding spot, maybe one he's recorded a log from before. <laughs> but then listen. <laughs> They found his hiding spot, and they were lying in wait for him there. There's even a super quiet rattle of a fence. Could he be where we show up at the start of the mission? It does, after all, have an overlook and a lot of bushes for the enemy to lie in wait. Now what's next is very interesting. No, quit that struggle. We can hear two separate voices, and when one of them relays the message, got him secured, it's a kid, notice we don't hear him activate a radio. Got him secured. It's a kid. There's a lot of static that could be obscuring it, but it seems kind of strange. Compare it to when a guard in Ground Zeroes hears a noise that he wants to investigate. Destruction confirmed. Only one remaining. You can do this. Got him secured. It's a kid. In fact, this guard's voice is so close to the recorder, it sounds to me like he could be speaking into the recorder itself, not a radio. There's even a weird whip sound, and then it's like the recorder's sensitivity got cranked to max after falling or being struck out of Chico's hand. Quit that struggle. Got him secured. It's a kid. So, next there's another cut. But if we compare the different cuts, some are cleaner than others. With tape recorders, you can tape over stuff. The cleaner ones are likely in spaces inside the tape that were blank. <laughs> Noisier ones may be clues that something's been taped over there. Doesn't it kind of sound like, for a half a second, the wind or the ocean? It's a kid. <laughs> that could also just be static. This is called, with tapes, imperfect erasure. Anyway, the sound that proves taping over has occurred is next, at around 2.01. And this is seriously a trip, because it's a recording of a different tape player blaring the song about pause, Love Deterrence, so loudly that it's clipping. It's a kid. Paz's mind control music is Here's to You, while Chico's seems to be Love Deterrence. It repeatedly shows up throughout these tapes, meaning that we're at times either taping over or being taped over a copy of a copy of the song. <laughs> Crazy, right? Even crazier, the version we're hearing sounds as though it's on a tape that's been taped over so many times that it's been degraded by continuous use. <laughs> Literally worn out and overstressed. That's why it seems to cut out for a split second. The concept of overstressed is something that will come back when we talk about Skullface's possible master plan. 212. See how clean of a cut that is? There's no so-called imperfect erasure. We'll see how this connects to Orwell's use of the word palimpsest in 1984 at some point in the future. For the first time now, we hear rain. We also hear tears. The word became flesh another hint that this is Skullface is doing. All Chico can say is, I'm, then it cuts. 220. I'm... 
we hear billowing of a tarp or something. Then we realize we're in Chico's dog cage, covered by a tarp. He says, I got caught. I'm in a cage. Give me back my recorder. At least whoever finds this will know what happened. <laughs> they gave me back my recorder as if they're being sympathetic or kind. But this is no gift. It's poison. Chico will not be the only one recording tapes of what's to come, obviously. The recordings are obviously part of Skullface's twisted plan. 240. Only now does Chico say, They're holding others here too. They're holding others here too. In both sequences, we can vaguely make out the grasshoppers. I mean, a cage. Give me back my recorder. At least whoever finds this will know what happened. <laughs> the fact that he's able to speak so loudly here implies the occupants, or enemy combatants, are filling in the old prison one by one, or at least in piecemeal fashion. Don't you think if it was otherwise, the other prisoners nearby would start shouting to get their voices on the tape too? I don't think that there are that many there yet. How many other POWs do we see during the mission? But there are only five to rescue, with four in the cages and one which escapes. The other six are spread out across the extra or side ops. How many fingers am I holding up? Five. You see at least that it is possible. He told us everything. Don't worry, I kept my word. He didn't suffer long. Which hints that at least some of this is taking place within a certain someone's mind. So, Chico says there's still no sign of pause. They're holding others here too. There's still no sign of pause. I think I found her! It's gotta be past! Then around 2.49, we start to hear barking dogs in the distance. Then at 2.51, Chico gasps. He's spotted Paz for the first time. We hear her dragged over and then thrown right into the adjacent cell. <gasps> At around 325, we can hear she was moved here, first with a wheelbarrow, and then dragged. Chico doesn't even recognize her at first. 
But notice they both are in a really weird position. They've both been given gifts from their own tormentors. Give me back my recorder. Chico. Raz. Chico. They're unable, you see, to tell apart good from evil, like Adam and Eve before the fall of man. I... I never imagined you would come for me. Pause at the end of tape 7 even says as much that she didn't think anyone would come to save her, but Chico did. And Chico didn't think he'd ever get to see her again after being caught, but he does. This is just the start of Skullface's manipulation and his evil, his corruption of life, love, and most of all, of language. You've done your part. You told us plenty. You've known the pain of ages. And even now you think, as any person would, but this can't be happening. Is it education? Morals? Faith? Just the imprint of a lifetime of stories? Face to face with oblivion, which is where you are, and you still think that help is coming. The world you were born into is made to save you. Isn't that right? Of course it is. Everyone knows that. Until your last breath, you know it. Without the slightest chance or reason left to them, humans are capable of hope. I'm no different. But for one thing, when my time came calling, I didn't die. Go of me! You will be next! Your hideous face will...